honorable Lop, can you control your member? Speaker, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, colleagues, colleagues, how suspended for five minutes? client it's indicated that is being accused of misconduct and misbehavior actually the heading is inquiry into allegations of misconduct and misbehavior made against you mr chairman Our client has no sufficient information as to who in particular is making the allegations of misconduct or misbehavior. And this has made it extremely difficult for us to prepare any meaningful defense to those allegations, Mr. Chairman. Why, from the record presented to us for Peruso, particularly the answered of that day, nowhere did the speaker who referred this matter to this committee made any mention of misconduct or misbehavior. Nowhere. We looked at the entire record, Mr. Chairman, 
and all that the speaker or the deputy speaker for that matter said, and I want to quote verbatim, you the relevant are quoting which answer, which page, which paragraph? The answer, the answer of 29th November, page 6,445. 6,445. I just want to put the directive given to the committee verbatim that as per rule 175 of our rules of procedure, I refer Honare Bozake to the committee on rules, privileges, and discipline for disciplinary action. But what preceded that directive mm -hmm. is the expression of the speaker about the proceedings. And uh, in the interest of time, I may not have the luxury of going through what the speaker said. But it is there, captured in, on the hazard, Mr. Chair and honorable members, the speaker does not talk about misconduct or misbehavior. So, it, and nowhere in this record it is mentioned. So our client is at a loss as to where this allegation is coming from, Mr. Chairman, which is captured on the head note of the summons, that there are allegations made against him about that particular accusation. Two, the person making those allegations is also not mentioned, because that would help us also prepare our case. Who is accusing him of mis misconduct or misbehavior? The particulars of the, that individual are not disclosed, because that would help us also dig into what could be the motive of the person making the allegations. As you know that, Mr. Chairman and honorable members, because motive in matters of this nature is important to get to understand why would one make allegations. And it would help us in cross-examination and dealing with those matters. The third issue also related to that, even if it were to be construed from the statement of the speaker that may be intended to accuse the Honorable Zak of misconduct or misbehavior. If it's by construction, if we were to stretch it to that extent, that maybe by construction, that's what he meant. Again, Mr. Chairman, there are no particulars. What is it that the Honorable Zak did which constitute the impound act of misconduct or misbehavior? What is it that, because it would help us again prepare, because I, I, I don't want to bring in the practice in the courts, but it's analogous to that, that once there is an accusation against you, it has to be particularized that you are accused of misconduct or misbehavior in that you did A, B, C, D, contrary to the, to the law or, or practice or given set of conduct or rules Again, we find it nowhere that the allegations are particularized. What is it? What, are, what is that act, the impound act that the Hodale Bozake allegedly did on that fateful day? It's not known to us. We have tried to scan through the record here. All we are seeing proceedings, Hodale Bozake, sit, no, what, nothing like uh, any act. And finally, Mr. Chair, the proceedings already on record. We have issues with that. The recordings that were attended in and the transcriptions made, as well as the analysis made by one Paul Kato, we ought to have been present to cross-examine them. Because, Mr. Chair, as indicated in the first notice, the Honorable Zake 
That is the one of 7th December 2022. The Honorable Zake was required to be here. On the second sitting, Wednesday 14th, that's when he was required to be here. Wednesday the 14th of December. But the committee received evidence for witnesses on 13th of December in his absence. Yet, Mr. Chair, as you correctly observed from the record and from some of the communications made, he reserved the right to cross-examine those particular individuals. I wouldn't want to call them witnesses, but those individuals who appeared here to tender in that recording to substantiate some of the allegations they were making, which we have looked at here, and we take exception of the same. To be exact, Mr. Chair, there is one, Pokato, who made the conclusion that has really disturbed us. That actually, in his conclusion, the conduct of Honorable Bozaka was violent, picking it from nowhere. Let's, let's okay. not go to the substance. Let's, let's look at the Most preliminary matters. matters. Preliminary matters we intended to raise, which make it extremely difficult for us to proceed with the case. Actually, we couldn't sit and prepare a defense in, and under those circumstances where you lack sufficient information, you have no particulars, you don't know who is making the allegations, and those allegations are not substantiated, that make, made it difficult for us to prepare any meaningful response to the same. I thank you, Mr. Chair. 75, under which this matter was brought. Uh, we presume that it was maybe brought under subrule Subrule 1B, because the, the speaker was not so specific. Just said under Rule 175, but there is Subrule 1A, B, C, D, E. We really, we are again at a loss as to which particular subrule we are proceeding, or the entire rule, but... Uh, It, it became a little difficult for us to ground it on any of these particular rules. I will substantiate on that later, Mr. Chairman. Let us dispose of those which I think don't need a lot of uh, mind to address ourselves to. One, about cross-examination. In our communication to the Honorable Zake, we did reiterate in writing that he has a right to cross-examine anybody who will appear before us. We are always are aware of that, and that we always implement. So nobody should uh, complain about cross-examination. Any person you would like who appeared before us and you would like to cross-examine him, you will always cross, if you so wish. But at the same time, we can't force anybody to cross-examine. If you come, you, you cross-examine. If you don't, then there is nothing we can do about it. So, about your right to cross-examine, that is guaranteed. And we did communicate that in writing. Uh, I think maybe, can I have my colleagues intervene at this point before I, uh, I think I, for the colleagues who have just walked in, the Honorable Kwago is raising an issue that he has read the hazard and he doesn't show anybody complaining of misconduct. And then two, he's saying that uh, the communication to his client does not give particulars of the misconduct. I, I hope I've got you correct clearly. Those yes. are the two issues you are raising. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yes, he agrees with those. So those are the two issues he's raising in a summary. Do you have anything to say before I can see how I can guide? It's by the house. And uh, 
once a complaint is brought to our attention, it's not our duty to begin looking for who is a complainant, who is this. All what we need is to bring witnesses or witnesses to come before us. And uh, they tell us the nature of the complaint and so on. Uh, that is one. Two, if a council thought he needed this before, he would have written to the committee asking for some of these things. Okay? And uh, to me, whether there is a, a complaint and disclosed or not at this stage, that should not stop us from uh, proceeding. The issue of uh, particulars of the misconduct, Chair, you have uh, always, I think, guided on this matter, that uh, we are not sitting as a court, we are not pursuing, we are not doing this and the other. All those particulars you are talking about, as we call witnesses, as we are inquiring, the witnesses appear before us, and uh, you pick what you talk as a because here we don't have a charge sheet where we expect to have uh, the particulars of uh, the offence. If at all there is an offence, we are dealing with disciplinary matters here. So, Chair, in my view, I think uh, my land friends uh, are preliminary issues, in my view, are uh, weak and uh, we can proceed. And then, he will look, uh, as we are proceeding, be in a position to know the nature of the complaint. If, if he has not understood it, then when someone is testifying, may perhaps we'll be in a position to understand what the complaint is about. But having read through what uh, transpired on that day, I think anyone will be in a position to understand. And then council was also raising the issue of uh, speaker not being specific on which particular paragraph we are proceeding. Again, when you look at uh, the proceedings, you'll be in a position to know as a lawyer whether this is under one or A, other B. I, I, I think it will be too much on our side to begin patrolizing that we are proceeding under this and the other. But as we proceed, you'll be in a position to know where we are because this was referred to the committee by the House as a, a matter concerning discipline, and we are mandated to look at uh, those matters. Yeah, that is my view. I did intimate at that time that for us we are an investigative body. The Honorable Zake is not on trial here in terms of a criminal prosecution. Where there is a prosecutor with a charge sheet and we are seated as a court. The nature of this parliamentary committee is to investigate whether there is any act that offends the rules, that offends our code of conduct. So we are actually investigating it. And as you realize, nobody is prosecuting here. We are just listening to the evidence we have. Uh, having said that, I think it is also maybe not correct if you just look for the word misconduct. You need to read the entire answer and see the communication of the speaker before he arrived at the decision of referring this matter to us in Rule 175. What had transpired? Because you see, if you are looking just for the word misconduct, you may not get it. But when you read the answer, there are complaints. There is a dissatisfaction. And our committee is now supposed to investigate whether that results into a misconduct or not, whether it offends our code of conduct or not. So don't just look for the word misconduct, you'll not get it. But when you read the entire answer, the communication, you'll find that there is a complaint arising out of an alleged, and I repeat, an alleged action of the Honorable Zake. We, we don't know until we have the evidence. But this is the good news, that nobody is going to come here and allege anything except in the, with your right to cross-examine. Whoever alleges will come here, present his evidence. 
And if that evidence, in our opinion, amounts to misconduct, then we'll put it to the Honorable Zake. And in our communication council, we had said that he's entitled to attend all the proceedings. Even if you want a recall of any witness, we'll recall any witness so that you're really aware of the facts we have and the decision we are going to make. So there is no ambush. I want to comfort you. We will not ambush because we have no personal interest in this matter. Absolutely none. And, you know, this process is uh, a peer review mechanism. It's about us, how we behave, whether we behave in accordance with our rules. That is all. So I don't want you or the public to have an impression that we are now seated and we are prosecuting somebody. The rules don't give us those powers, but they give us powers to investigate. Your reference to Rule 175, this matter has already been resolved, the powers of this committee. Actually, the Honorable Zak helped us so much to take this matter to court in the other case. Now we know the powers the committee has because the Constitutional Court was very clear on the powers this committee has. And as you realize, uh, because you are representing him, the Constitutional Court upheld our report and it did not fault us in any way as a committee. And I repeat, the, co the Constitutional Court did, did not fault us in the way we handled the proceedings, not in any one particular instance. We are, we are absorbed. So we hand our matter in according with, one, the Constitution, the Administration of Parliament Act, the Powers and Privileges Act, and the Rules of Procedure. Strictly. Strictly. So the issue about the powers of this committee are spelled out in Rule 175. And we shall proceed in accordance with that rule. So. Having made that clarification, I think we are going to proceed. Would you, your counsel, your assistant, is there an opportunity to listen to the chair? And you are aware that uh, we are currently out of parliament about matters of abduction of our people in this country. The matter before you is a matter of abduction. Honorable Zake rose in Parliament, I was there, talking about matters of abduction. Chair, proceed here. No, no. Please. Let me listen to him. And if you read the answer. I, I like uh, you, colleagues to have very strong shock absorbers. This is the only way we can handle matters of this nature. And you must be as patient as possible because any proceedings I share, I have a judicious mind. Matters, this is a quasi-judicial. So let's listen to what the honorable Patrick says, and we shall make the necessary decisions. Proceed. Yes, Mr. Chair. We are here seated today. When our fellow colleagues of parliament are out of parliament on the same matters of abduction, wouldn't this committee chair wait until the entire parliament, the entire parliament resolves on this uh, because at where we are, as parliament, we are at a standstill over matters of abduction of Ugandans. Here we are, you're here calling Honorable Zak a member of the opposition to come and hear matters, accusations on matters of abduction. So, Chair, I'm just raising a procedural matter. I'm not a member of this committee, but I'm a member of parliament. Okay. Now let me guide. Whenever you raise a procedure point, the first issue must raise under what rule? 
and I have been listening to you patiently for you to cite the rule of procedure you are raising on. I've been patiently waiting the rule on which you are rising. Because you see, <laughs> colleagues, nothing other than the law. And the rules are very clear. If you are rising on a point of procedure, mention the rule. That's the only way I can rule either way. If you rise on a point of procedure, then you make a, a general submission not anchored in the rules. How do you expect the chair to guide? Chair, How do you? Chair, thank you very much. So can you go back to the rules? Chair, thank you very much. It's so, not contained in our so, rules. Honorable Sam. But as a committee of parliament, Honorable Sam. on the same matter where the House... Honorable Sam, but listen to the chair. The committee you are talking to is the committee on rules, discipline and privilege. If you are raising issues outside the rules to a rules committee, how do you expect me to handle it? Really? I, 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 I want to say this, and please, le, le, colleagues, if you want to have a meaningful conversation, anchor your judgments in accordance with the rules. Because we are the custodian of the rules of procedure of parliament. And I am the chief custodian of the rules. So if you are raising an issue of the rules procedure, please go to the rules and I'll answer it. If you are making a general conversation, really, I can't. And, and on that, let me make a, direction, a directive. If it's an issue of the procedure which you rose on, raise the rule under which you are submitting. If it isn't, then let it lie and we proceed, okay? Because I will not act outside the rules. Chair, matter of the opposition being out of parliament on matters of abduction I can't rule on is not that provided one. for in our it rules. It is outside. But Hold you on. are aware that the opposition is out of parliament on matters of abduction of Ugandans. We cannot sit here and do the same accusations against Honorable Zake. Chair, I stand to be uh, guided. I, I have really guided, and the good thing is you also accept. And let me tell you, you cannot talk about rising on a point of procedure and you submit outside the rule. Then you say, by the way, what I'm submitting is not with the rules, but let me submit. Really? Let's do this. And I don't want to open up a Pandora box, which does not help us. One, whatever submission, the whole, whatever orientation it may be, it is outside the rules. And for that matter, we cannot proceed with it. Because the request would be for me, Honorable Sabah's request that I now act outside the rules. And is telling the chairman of the rules committee, Please forget about the rules. Let us discuss things differently. I will not do that. And I will not guide that way. So that issue, please, if it is about the house, address it in the house. And the house will address it. Or you address it to the speaker. Here we have this business. And the good news is all committees are proceeding, actually. And the reason why you are here as a member of parliament is because you are participating in the primary in the, uh, committee proceedings. Anybody who has any other issue? Rule 159, which is the general functions of the Committee of Parliament. And uh, at F in particular says to carry out any other function as the House may assign from time to time. Uh, as a committee, we are not here in, in terms of uh, any form of partisan. We are here, when we are in the committee, we are not that uh, segregated in form of any party, but we are here all to, for the duty assigned to us. And uh, it is sad that we are trying to bring it back to issue of party. I think the nature of this committee, as you have uh, clearly informed your honorable colleagues, is that uh, we are not charging anybody. And even as the, the way the speaker actually sent the matter 
to the committee is because of the powers, the limitations of powers that stands with the speaker. He, he has to refer it to the committee, and once the investigation is done, we can forward it to the floor. So uh, I just wanted to assure the honorable colleague that uh, we are not here in any form of a partisan form, and uh, I think let's look at this matter in a, in a positive manner. The opposition being out of parliament does not affect the work of committee, and I think that is why today you are here in the House as in the, to attend the committee work as well. All other committees are also proceeding. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The position is out of parliament. That doesn't stop the committee work from going on. Because right now, different committees have their schedules of work. And so we schedule our work, and we are here. And I want to thank our colleagues, the Honorable Zake, together with the Honorable uh, Elias Lokwago, and the team for coming. That means we are doing our rightful work. And so what my colleagues here is raising is completely different. So, Mr. Chairman, I entirely agree that we should continue with our work. Thank you. I've already made the ruling on that one. I think let's proceed. Uh, but you made reference to the judgment of the Constitutional Court in respect to the matter of the Honorable Zak against the House. And indeed, in, chair, ref in reference to only the committee. The committee, yes. Yes. Yes, specifically on the issue of the committee. And. Uh, well, I'm glad that I was the lawyer in that particular matter. And when we got that judgment, the lead judgment is very clear about the proceedings of this committee. Yes, like you have observed, they are uh, quasi-judicial in nature. But the court pronounced itself on this matter in the lead judgment of Justice Muria Gonja that uh, the, these proceedings are analogous to criminal proceedings in as far as the right to a fair hearing is concerned. And in that particular judgment, uh, Honorable Chair, they specifically quoted the Article 28 and said in as much as it talks about criminal proceedings, it applies both in civil and criminal and as well as quasi-judicial proceedings like this one, the provisions of Article 28, the right to a fair hearing, which is non derogable under Article 44. And one of such key elements of the right to a fair hearing is for the accused person, and I use this advisedly, or... Actually, I, I advise that there is no... I choose the person here. We don't want what is not provided for under our rules. Okay, the person who is under investigation, let me use that, in quasi-judicial quasi proceeding, our understanding of that particular judgment, the implication is that he's entitled to know the nature of the accusations against him. Just like the accused person has a right to know the nature of the offense being preferred against them. So in this one, they are choosing the, the person who is under investigation, who is the subject of the proceedings, has got a right under Article 28 to know the nature of the accusation against him. That's why it's important to have it particularized that this is exactly that you did. And uh, we have failed to get that. So that to understand that, if I may conclude the Honorable Chair in response to what Honorable Isaac and Honorable Mutemia. But about, uh, that I have already ruled. No, 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 no. Rule uh, 175. No, what I'm saying, uh, that I've already ruled. No, 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 no. I've guided on No, that. no, on Rule 175, just, just seeking for guidance, Honorable okay. Chair, with all due respect, about the specific sub rule. Why it's important for us to know the specific sub rule? The wordings are different. In sub rule 1A, this committee has got powers to inquire into any complaint of contempt of parliament or breach of privilege or any matter of privilege which may be referred to it and, and to recommend to the House. That is to inquire, sub rule A. The word is inquire. Sub rule B, consider any matter of discipline referred to it by the speaker 
or the House, including attendance of members of the C and to report to the findings. The first one is to inquire. The other one is to consider. In my understanding, these two are different. The first one is inquiry. The second one is a hearing. Hearing is your word. Consider uh -uh. is hearing. Yeah. No, no, no. Hearing is your word. And don't import that word into the rules. Our rules are deliberate. They use consider and let us look at considering. Don't import words in the law. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why? Why I'm raising this, Honorable Chair? The wording here, the speaker said, that is per rule 175. I refer Honorable Zake to the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and for disciplinary action. For disciplinary action. Now, the question we want you to understand, is it a hearing against Honorable Zake, or it's an inquiry generally about what transpired on that day? If that can be clarified, we shall be good to go. It is both. If it is both, Mr. Chair, if it is a hearing against Mr. And, and, and let me tell you, first of all, and we don't know what happened, and we are not the one who are choosing. The matter was only referred to us, and we only read the answer as it is. Two, the council is reading the last paragraph. But when you look at that answer, uh, it has almost like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you are looking at the conclusion. You are not looking at all what transpired before. And like uh, you say, the, what, you've read, uh, what you've read before, it's sit down, blah, 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 and so on, which we don't want to go into it because we have not found out. Let us look at the evidence before us because we don't know it. I repeat, we don't know the evidence. We are going to see that evidence at the same time you are going to see it. And we, we will put it on our jacket that in our view, this amounts to either a breach of Rule 175 A, B, C, D, or against our Code of Conduct, what do you have to say? And then the Honorable Zake will have an opportunity. That's why we are not asking him to even start preparing a defense now. Okay. Just listen to it, cross-examine, and then thereafter we shall have an idea on the sort of conduct which is impugned by the House and referred to us. And that matter is now resolved. Let us do this. Let's proceed. Uh, honorable colleagues, we did write to the Honorable on uh, Honorable Zaka, I think you needed, I, I don't know that you speak through your lawyer, but on the 16th. And on the 16th, we forwarded to you whatever had been presented to us. I want you to confirm whether you received it. The communication on the 16th of December. It's one of the 7th of December. This is 22nd. We have it. We have it. You, you, you received that communication? It is here, yes. Okay. And whatever these people who appeared before us brought to us, we forwarded to you. Is there anything which is mentioned, that letter which you, you are missing, which was not forwarded to you by the club? Was forwarding to the Honorable Zake what transpired when these technical people appeared before us? We forwarded everything to him and requested them to come. And if they want to cross-examine them, that's okay with us. We can schedule a date and you cross-examine them. Thank you. We have item one up to four. Uh, 
Can we go it for purposes of the record? Yeah, we have one up to four. That's the photo copy of the certified copy of the hand side. Yes. A CD containing the video recording of plenary proceedings. Yes. A CD containing CCTV footages of the chamber. Yes. And a CCTV video analysis report on the alleged misconduct. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mm. Uh, And obviously, one, two, three following was to let uh, uh, the Honorable Zaki know how we are going to handle the matter. When you go to the next paragraph, mm. one, you are supposed to be granted an opportunity at appropriate time to cross-examine any witness you may wish. To. Three, okay, that is all. Definitely would be interested in having those particular individuals cross-examined on the piece of evidence that they tendered. Uh, but unfortunately, apart from the transcription, we do not have their testimonies, whether indeed actually they came as witnesses for purposes of giving evidence on oath or whatever, we do not have that record. We are not favored with the same. We asked them to provide this because we thought they are the ones who have this as as materials on the subject on the day this the on the day that incident took place. So they just came for purposes of laying these documents to us. However. Whatever, however you look at it, they are witnesses. No, no, Mr. Chairman, what I was talking about, apart from what they tendered, we do not have their testimonies, what indeed they testified. We do not have it. Uh, Clark, can we, colleagues, the proceedings over that day, when these people uh, submitted these documents, Okay. May, may we also be advised, thank you, Mr. Chit, who witnessed the proceedings on that day, not necessarily these ones who are tendering in a record, because these ones just tendering in the record which, which was in their custody, but any eyewitness who was there on that day so that we have them cross-examined. <laughs> You see, if, if they come, we'll, we'll, we'll do, you'll be here because every day you are going to attend all the proceedings except when it is reported writing. So every witness who will come, you'll, you'll see him and you'll cross-examine him. Uh, finally, yes. Honorable Chair, to be more specific, yes. uh, considering it, the circumstances of this matter, like you have properly guided that this is an inquiry, uh, should we go expecting the speaker, the deputy speaker who presided over the proceedings on that day, to come and testify? No, that will leave it to our discretion. We shall invite whoever we think is relevant to this. Most of that. If you want, you will be a witness, and you know how to get your own witnesses. But our witnesses, we shall get whoever we think is relevant to this inquiry. We shall invite him. And once you invite him, you will cross-examine, okay? No, but Mr. Chair, But yeah. if he's your witness, you can invite him. No. In an inquiry, in an inquiry, you are guided, Mr. Chair, that this is an inquiry. There are no prosecution witnesses, no accused witnesses. Yes. All are witnesses of the committee. That's true. And I think in the, it would be appropriate, Mr. Chair. Take it tongue in cheek. Yes? Take it tongue in cheek. It's not tongue in cheek, Mr. Chair. I'm the one who has said it, and I'm the one telling you so. So the, <laughs> the witnesses who would be invited, you will have opportunity to cross-examine them, and the discretion is on us to see who is the relevant witness. Okay? Yes? What the Honorable Counsel is uh, saying is that uh, basically he would like to 
cross-examine everyone who was present in the house on the day. He did say that. Uh, he did say that. <laughs> no, that uh, you, you, he is not contented with the answered issues presented, the recordings, the answered. He's not ready with that. But uh, he's trying to perpetrate that uh, they, are, they should be at liberty to call any eyewitness, and eyewitness are yeah, those members who attended the sitting on that day. So is that what he's trying to prepare, that everyone is no. at his disposal? Thank you. I think the submission he made, all witnesses are our witnesses, okay? Uh, forget the other joke I had made, and which he had picked on when I said, if you want him, bring him as your witness. All witnesses are going to be witnesses of the committee because that's the inquiry, okay? Uh, and any witness we bring, they will cross-examine him. But, uh, mm. And without mincing words, Honorable Chair, we would like to see that person who is aggrieved by the conduct of the Honorable Zake appear here and testify the one who is making accusations against the Honorable Bozake, who is aggrieved if by his is, conduct. If it is the house, you would like the entire house here? This is exactly the whole point. Oh, no, that we the, don't work at If that it way. is the entire house, you, the, the, the people come from the house and testify Chair. that they are aggrieved. Chair, the house referred the matter to this committee. We are inquiring, we are considering, and that's why we are saying that all the witnesses belong to us like the chair has rightly guided. Any witness that this committee feels is a proper witness in this matter will appear before us and we shall have that witness give us information that he has or she has and you'll have the right to be cross-examination. But uh, for us to begin imagine that we know who is aggrieved and who is not aggrieved and therefore we bring the aggrieved person. Chair, I don't think as a committee we know anyone who is aggrieved. The matters are just before us for consideration. Yes. The only person we know that there is allegation against Honorable Zake of disciplinary nature. Now we are investigating to establish whether actually there is any disciplinary issue. And that's what we are doing. So we, we may not need to call this one, the other one. In our view, whoever we feel is relevant for us to find out whether Honorable Zake is culpable or not, will be called, in our view. And if we don't call the one you think would be the one to make the case for or against, that is to the advantage of counsel for the Honorable Zaki, in my view. Okay, let's look at it technically, and pronounces himself. It is no longer about the speaker. It's about the House. I have been making rulings here, decisions. It's not about me. It's about this committee. And that's how parliamentary proceedings are conducted. Once a speaker pronounces himself on behalf of the House, seated as a speaker, it is about that House. And if members are not agreeable with that decision, the rules actually provide a contest of that ruling. It's all detailed out in our rules. Say, no, no, no. Right on about what we don't agree with what you are saying, it is, doesn't reflect our views. And there is a whole procedure how you can contest a ruling of or a decision of the speaker. So, what is referred to us here, don't look at the person presiding over, it's no longer that. It is now the house that refers the matter here. Uh, you know what the rules say, really? I don't want to cause embarrassment here, please. Requesting for submission. You're requesting for submission. You're requesting a submission. Mm. Chair, I just request to. Hold on, Bokabi. You don't know what the rules say. And please don't allow me to be on record, please. I is why I was. Do you want to make a formal ruling? Okay, let it lie. The of rules. And um, any matter before you 
must be based on the rules provided. It implies that anybody accused of misconduct must be accused within the rules. And it would be proper to proceed knowing that the accused broke this rule of the house. That is going to be our finding. You want us to make a finding now whether the accused broke a rule or not without hearing any evidence. Chair. Please. Chair. Honorable Sam, let's proceed. Why are we here? We are here to find out whether there was any rule breached or not. Chair, you earlier guided me that I was out of order because and I... And I'm sure you realize you are out of order. Because I was not specific on which rule I was speaking with. Can you now, now, can you now go back to the rule on which you are raising that point? Chair, the, I am, the I'm, reference, I'm, I'm, hold I'm, on, the reference to the rule is under rule 175. That was what referred to us. And 175. Chair, yeah, 175 chair is broad and there is no way where they say that they are choosed broke this rule of the house. Oh, come on. At this level, before you start the investigations, you should know which rule the member before you 175. Broke. What does it whether, say? Whether, whether... Tell this house what it says. Uh, 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 you, you see, first of all, I think the beauty, you know, that uh, I, the rules is my comfort zone. But to some other people, it might be turbulence, but to me, it is smooth sailing. The issue has been ruled upon, and let's proceed. And if there is any contestation about the ruling, you go back again to the rules. Okay? We can't go through it over and over again and so on. If there is any contestation about the chair's decision or ruling, you go back again to the rules. That's how we work, and that's how Parliament works. So, uh, you, you need to study this. Do you need any of these people who presented to cross-examine them? And then we give you a date when you are ready. Okay? Yes, as you earlier directed with their testimonies. Yeah, with their testimony. Provide yes. them by the close of business day. And uh, I think we can resume on Wednesday. Okay? 11 o'clock. Uh, but make sure they receive them by close of business today. Okay? Yeah. And then we can resume 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Call, uh, lead, no gentlemen, there is no ladies. Gentlemen, who, officers who provided this, please be ready 11 o'clock for cross-examination in case council wishes to cross-examine any of you. Okay? Whoever presented this, you understand? All of you are here? Yes? Yeah, all of you, make sure you are here on Wednesday, 11 o'clock for cross-examination. Uh, if you may know, Mr. Chair, how many they are? I thought you were going to look at the record. <laughs> The record is being forwarded to you, <laughs> then you look at it whether they are one or two. <laughs> you see the beautiful, the beautiful thing, if you do things in according to the law, you don't have any hiccups. But if you want to do the, the honorable Samba way, say, ah, the rules provide, but let us do other things. <laughs> so I think we do that. Then tomorrow, because this was purely what you would call Okay, analogous.
to what you would call in, uh, in the other procedures, uh, what do you call it? Okay. Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Uh, not even a conferencing. <laughs> um, can we have, you are put on notes that the other one we are going to do tomorrow. And we've already forwarded the documents you did. Honorable Sake, you got it? And can we be on record whether Honorable Rukwag will still be your lawyer? So that next communication we know we don't have to be sending it to you, then we send to the lawyer in that matter too. So we are going to conference tomorrow about that particular case also. Okay? 11 o'clock. Any other issue colleagues you would like to raise? Honorable Elias, any other issue to raise? We are adjourning this case to Wednesday. 11 o'clock. However, the matter regarding the second issue, which was referred to us, uh, when was it? We are setting out all the preliminary points of law, whatever it is, tomorrow at 11. So we are going to meet tomorrow at 11. My committee members, can you remain behind after this meeting? The matter is adjourned. Thank you for coming, Honorable Zakan. <laughs>